نَسْتَعِينُهُ وَنَسْتَغْفِرُهُ وَنَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ وَنَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ شُرُورِ أَنفُسِنَا وَمِنْ سَيِّئَاتِ أَعْمَالِنَا مَنْ يَهْدِهِ اللَّهُ فَلَا مُضِلَّ لَهُ وَمَنْ يُضْلِلْ فَلَا هَادِيَ لَهُ أَشْهَدُ أَنْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ وَحْدَهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ وَلِيُّ الصَّالِحِينَ وَأَشْهَدُ أَنَّ مُحَمَّدًا عَبْدُهُ وَرَسُولُهُ صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه ومن تبع نهجهم وقتفى أثرهم إلى يوم الدين أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار والعياذ بالله ويطع الله ورسوله فقد رشد ومن يعصيهما فلا يضر إلا نفسه ولا يضر الله شيئا يا عباد الله أوصيكم ونفسي بتقوى الله عز وجل ألا وإنه وصية الله للأولين والآخرين قال تعالى في محكم تنزيله ولقد وصينا الذين أوتوا الكتاب من قبلكم وإياكم أن اتقوا الله وقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Master. All praise be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him and thank Him and ask His forgiveness and repent for Him. He whom Allah guided, no one can mislead Him. And the one He misled, no one can guide Him. I bear witness that there is no God in true existence with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no God that deserve our worship, that deserve our submission, our fear and hope. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is the ally of the righteous. Now we are witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the messenger of Allah and his servant, the last peace and blessing be upon him, his companions and followers, for the day of judgment and resurrection. Going forward at the best of all speeches, word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Quran Al-Kareem. The best of all guidance is guidance of Muhammad <coughs> sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Best of doing all things is the way of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Evil of all things is innovation in matter of religion. Every innovation in Islam is bid'ah. And every bid'ah is paths to stray or paths to stray lead to hell where Allah shall and protect her. O servants of Allah, I command you and myself to be regardful to our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make protection for ourselves against the torment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the commandment that Allah gave to those past and to us. He said in the Quran, indeed we have commanded those been given the book before you Muslims and you Muslims also to be regardful to your duties to Allah, to put that protection between you and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and protection for us between the prior protection between us and punishment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to fulfill and do his commandments and to stay away from his forbiddings. That is the best taqwa Allah azza wa jalla. To stay on focus on righteous deeds and stay away from disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with His blessings and mercy has given us numerous opportunities by giving us this deen, this Islam. So Islam as a package, it came with a complete system that will guarantee our better life in this world here and better life in the hereafter. 
That is why if we look at pillars of Islam, the pillars Islam was built upon, they will give us clear indication for our well-being in this world and our well-being in the hereafter. Islam is not just a way or a tool for us to attain Al-Jannah. With being miserable in this life, no. But it is to guarantee better life, to guarantee everlasting happiness for everyone in this society and also give you Al-Jannah. From our declaration of our testimony that there is no God which is a shahada to, and there is no God but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam shahada to an la ilaha illallah wa anna Muhammad rasulullah From that moment Islam lay foundation of our happiness and our relief. And from this foundation, you see Muslim breathe happiness. When you see a Muslim, an abiding Muslim, the first thing you see in his or on her face, Wallahi, is happiness. That came from the first foundation of a shahada to an la ilaha illallah wa anna muhammadan rasul it relief it release you and relieve you from all stresses of this world that there is one who is in control the creator there is one who is in charge of everything. And that one is the most merciful to you, wherever you may be, whoever you may be. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You don't have to ask anyone, is, is that creator who brought me, uh, is he merciful to me? Does he love me? Does he like me? You cannot, you cannot ask him. You cannot. Nobody asks that. Does Allah love me? No. You know He loves you more than your mother, more than your father, more than everyone else on the earth because of what He has given you already. Life. Life. These organs that you are able to do things with, can you pay for them? No. We all, we all say that. We all know that. We cannot pay for these things. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provided us. So when we believe and have this mindset that the one who gave us this life, who brought us to this world here, who is in charge of all our affairs, is that supreme being who is the most loving one to us. That lays down the stones of happiness and release. And it also believing that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a messenger of Allah clear you from confusion making the message one crystal clear <coughs> you obey him you good that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said wa in tuti'uhu tahtadu if you follow him you are well guided that is why, brother, these are the secret from happiness of Muslims. They may be the poorest person in the world, in the society, in the community. But you can see them the most lived, the most happiest person in that society. They go to sleep when they put their big head on their pillow immediately, on their pillow immediately. They can smile. And they feel happy with everyone else around them. This is Islam. Then to other pillars of Islam, 
إقام الصلاة إيتاء الزكاة that guarantees إقام الصلاة that guarantees our closure with Allah سبحانه وتعالى our closeness to Allah سبحانه وتعالى five times a day to remind you of Allah سبحانه وتعالى connect you with your Creator Allah سبحانه وتعالى then you go to as zakat not only you now, but now you have to pay attention to others around you. Muslims, those may be less fortunate than you are. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulated and obligated a portion from our wealth to those are less fortunate among us. And he specifically mentioned their names. They didn't even leave it to be spent as we desired. Because you know what? If Allah did not specifically specify and distribute this zakah, what could happen? Wealthy man could still increase their wealth and status with that zakah. You know what they would do? They will just go and say, okay, I zakah is going to be the masjid. I'm going to be masjid, 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 masjid. Yes, that is just a self increment still. And state us too. But Allah said, no, 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 no. Not to the masjid, to that person who also in need of good life. To that person. Then Saul Ramadan. Why Allah gave us the Saul Ramadan? To prepare us to better men, to be even better, to curb our missteps and just be right. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala called us finally to the final pillar, and that is Al Hajj. Why Hajj? Why Hajj? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala went to Muslim, my brothers and sisters, He wants you to reflect. And He want to, He call, He's calling you to reflect. And Muslims, number one, to reflect on the history of this monotheism. Number two, and to tell you the equality between all Muslims around the world to show you that is a clear manifestation of equality between Muslims that is in the Hajj. No matter where you came from, no matter what you have, no matter what you don't have, you're all going to be standing in one place of Al Arafah wearing the same type of garment not expensive, not least expensive, I'm just looking at each other on the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing can tell you the equality between Muslims and sense of equality, notion of equality in Islamic society than the scene that you see in al hajj And it is the fifth pillar of Islam. So brothers and sisters, we are in the season of Hajj. It is the fifth pillar of our Islam. Allah prescribed it on, upon all of us, whoever can afford to do it. If you earn wealth and health and a way to go, it is prescribed upon you. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَلِلَّهِ عَلَى النَّاسِ حِجُّ الْبَيْتِ Man ilayhi sabila. Allah has prescribed pilgrimage of this Hajj, the, the house, whoever can afford it. Wealth, health, and a way. A way to, to come. And that way can be a real way, meaning that you may have wealth and health. But the way going there is not safe. You cannot take it to go. 
or it can be corporeal, like permission. You don't have a permission to go, meaning that you don't have a visa, then it is not obligated on you anymore as long as you are looking for visa and you couldn't have visa to go there or permits to go perform it. But we also try, if you can do it, and we don't have to wait until the later time of our age. The common mistakes that many Muslims commit. We say, okay, I'm not going to hide now, I'm young, I'll wait until I become old, and then I can perform Hajj. No. You need to do it and supposed to do it at your earliest possible convenient time. That is when it's supposed to be done. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept Hajj of our brothers and sisters, those are performing it this year. Many of them have traveled, uh, have traveled, and some of them may be still here, but they still they will go, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, we enjoy them and command them, those are performing hygiene, to make their intention in that hajj purely for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ikhlasun niya. It is the key in every deed we do in this religion. Let them clear their intention only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And stay focused and recall and always accompany the feeling of the moment, meaning harmony and love for others. If you are there, you see a lot of Muslims coming from all of them. Think about that. There is no need for any aggression because you may see those things that takes place there. Other people pushing each other, pushing each other. Yes, you cannot afford, you can avoid pushing each other there because so many people will be there. But always accompany sense of harmony and love for others. When you do that, no matter when you are pushing or people are pushing you, you will feel love and kindness to them and as well they will feel the same to you too. How to perform hygiene? <coughs> it may be too late to talk about that. Specifically, many have gone already and alhamdulillah they have brothers with them. Those will guide them to that inshallah ta'ala. But the remainder for us who are here today, those will not go this year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when He prescribed Hajj for them, He gave us something else to do too while we are here. It will soon come to us in the first 10 days of the Hajj. And those are the most sacred days in our calendar year sacred days in our calendar year. To be noted, the most sacred month in our calendar year, month-wise, is Ramadan. The most sacred day, single day, in our calendar is Friday. The most sacred night in our calendar <coughs> It's Laylatul Qadr that fall in Ramadan. The magnitude of that night, that's what combined with events that took place in that month, that's what made Ramadan the most sacred night, in the most sacred month. Then left days combined are these nine days of the Hijjah. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, ma min ayyamin al-amalu salihu fi hinna khayrun wa ahabbu ila allahi min hadihin ayyamin ashar. There are no days 
in which good deeds are more loving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than these 10 days of Dhul Hijjah. Days of Dhul Hijjah, which night Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swore. Wal Fajri wa layalin ashr. Brothers and sisters, so good deeds are honorable and their deeds are multiplied in rewards in these 10 days of the Hajj. Now we look at what are the deeds that we can do in these days. First of all, if you can fast these nine days or these ten, nine days of the Hajj, the tenth day you can fast that. That will be a day. You cannot do that. If you cannot fast, if you can fast, nine days of the Hijjah is a great thing. Because fasting is one of the most honorable deeds that one can do. A worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala considered as his own. He said, as wa ana ajizigi. Fasting is for me. And I, and only I, will reward on fasting. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did not fast the whole nine days of the Hijjah. There is no single narration that says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted these nine days of the Hijjah except Yawm Arafah for many reasons. For many reasons. Good deeds are multiple and we cannot make our good deeds only fasting. There are many, many things to do. If the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam fasted all nine days of the day, it could be one that he scared a lot and he ran away from a lot to make it prescribed on his own man. That will create another difficulty on us. Because of that he wouldn't do such a thing. And second thing, would not send a notion that fasting is the only thing that we can do in these nine days. That is why he didn't fast all these nine days to be narrated to us. But Yawma Arafah, he fasted that day, and he recommended we all fast Yawma Arafah, and he said, Yawma Arafah ahtasibu illallahi ayyukafira sanatan madhiya wa sanatan qadima. I hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by fasting your marathon will expiate our sin of the past year and the upcoming year. So that expiates sin of two years. Brothers and sisters, you can give a sadaqah, you can teach lessons in these days, you can visit sick, you can help poor and honorables and weak. Whatever you can do, brothers and sisters, do in these ten days or these first nine days of the Hijjah. Also, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam recommended that in these nine days, among good deeds that we can do is to make more of a tahleel, La ilaha illallah, and more of a takbir, Allahu Akbar, and more of al tahmid, Alhamdulillah, in these ten, nine days. It came in a hadith, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said ma min ayyamin a'adhamu inda Allahi wal amalu salihu fihinna ahabu ila Allahi min hadihi ayyamin ashr fa'athiru fihinna min al-tahlili wa takbiri wa tahmidi so we can do that wherever you are you can make takbir you drive in your car you can make tahmid and tahlil we can always do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, لِيَذِكُرُ اسْمَ اللَّهِ عَلَى مَا فِي أَيَّامٍ مَعْلُمَاتٍ عَلَى مَا رَزَقَهُمْ مِنْ بَهِيمَةِ الْأَنْعَامِ To mention Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name on these days. After these days and after Yawm Arafah, that will come. And common question that brothers are asked, when we have different calendars, when we have different calendars, we consider Yawm Hijjah starts this day. And to us, the ninth day will fall on Friday. But we see that the calendar in Mecca, the calendar in Mecca, 
the ninth days fall on Thursday. When should I fast Yom Ma'arab? This is a common question that we receive all the time. In this particular event, in this particular situation here, Allah did not tell you to fast, or the Prophet didn't tell you to fast, the ninth day of the Hijjah. He didn't say that. He asked you to fast Yawm Arafah. And Yawm Arafah, that is a day that people stand in Arafah. Whether that will fall on your 8th of the Hijjah or it will fall on the 9th of the Hijjah. If you can know, if you can know the day they stand in Arafah, that is the day you supposed to fast. The clear? That is the day you supposed to fast. Now if you cannot know, meaning there is no communication, we passed that error before it was there before. There is no telephone communication, TVs and stuff. So you can know. So that day, those time, you will fast the ninth day of the Hijjah. But now you can see, this is the day of Arafah. That is the day that you need to fast. And come after the brothers and sisters, Yawm Dhul Hijjah. Yawm Al Ashir Min Dhul Hijjah. That is the Eid day. That is the day of our festivity. Everywhere you are, except those performing Hajj. Those who perform in Hajj, the greatest day, the biggest day for them is Yawm Arafah. For us, the, the biggest, greatest day for us is Yawm Al Eid. And that is the 10th day of the Hijjah. The best thing we can do that day is to slaughter a sacrifice as a thanksgiving to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for saving us. For saving us from being slaughtered. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he showed his messenger, his, his prophet Ibrahim, alayhi salatu wa salam, a dream a vision to slaughter his son. He said to his son, Ya Bunaya, inni ara fil manami anni adbahuna. Oh my son, I've seen in this vision that I'm slaughtering you. What do you see? He said to his father, do whatever you are commanded. You'll find me, insha'Allah, among the patients. Satajiduni, insha'Allah, min as And his father was ready to slaughter his son. And wallahi, he would have slaughtered him. Because Allah commanded him to do so. And he, was, he agreed, he wanted to do it. And his son surrendered also. That is why Allah said, Falamma aslama. When they both surrendered to Allah's will, and Allah's commanded, وَتَلَّهُ لِلْجَبِينِ And flung him on his forehead, forehead to cut his neck. He was ready. Seconds, but seconds, portions of the second, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent him a message, Ya Ibrahim, Ya Ibrahim, and قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا Ya Ibrahim, قَدْ صَدَّقْتَ الرُّؤْيَا you have fulfilled the division. And Allah ransomed him with a tremendous ship. Brothers and sisters, Ibrahim is your father. Right? Ibrahim is your father in religion, in monotheism, in obedience. And it will be incumbent on every obedient servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if Ibrahim did slaughter his son to slaughter your son for Allah how many of us here brothers and sisters would have been a sacrifice naive think about it but Allah not only ransomed Ismail he ransomed all of us that is why brothers and sisters we slaughter that she for Allah as thanksgiving and remembrance of His mercy and love of all of us, brothers and sisters. That is why Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, That day, Yawm Al Eid, nothing is more loving to Allah than shedding blood, slaughtering that sacrifice. 
whoever can do it. If not everybody can, at least leader of the household do it if you have. If you don't have no stress, this is Islam. You don't have no stress. Allah subhanahu wa the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he slaughtered two, one for him himself and his family. And he said, Allahumma hadha li wa li ali Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is for me and for all my family members. He slaughtered the second one. He said, Allahumma hadha liman lam yadbah min ummati Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This one is for whoever cannot afford the sacrifice from my nation. Allah said, لَقَدْ جَاءَكُمْ رَسُولُ مَنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ عَزِيزٌ عَلَيْهِ مَا عَنِتُمْ حَرِيسٌ عَلَيْكُمْ بِالْمُؤْمِنِينَ الرَّعُوفِ أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولك فاستغفر الله لكم رحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا الله سبحانه وتعالى سيد لكل أمة جعلنا منسكا هم ناسكوا for every nation we have appointed a festivity for them that they should celebrate Allah gave us the Eid al-Adha and Eid al-Fitr as our two festivities that we should celebrate so brothers and sisters let's celebrate Eid al-Adha we have celebrated Eid al-Fitr it was beautiful, amazing and I've seen you guys in the park it was mashallah, alhamdulillah Eid al-Adha is coming let's celebrate it again in the most beautiful man, the beautiful way. And let's bring our children out to instill in them these, mem these memories. Wallahi, these children are the next generation of Islam in this country here. And I am very optimistic. Wallahi, I am very optimistic of the future of Islam in this country. Because of you and because of these children, you can find them in every sector of the society, moving the society better and fixing problems of this society. If you've been living in this country here and in this year, years, 20, 25 years ago, now you can see a lot of changes towards goodness. وَلَقَدْ كَتَبْنَا فِي الزَّبُورِ مِنْ بَعْدِ الذِّكْرِ أَنَّ الْأَرْضَ يَرِثُهَا عِبَادِيَ الصَّالِحِ We have written in a Zabur after the remembrance of the land my righteous servants will inherit it. I say it and I will continue saying that and you, for you to believe it, this land will be inherited by righteous servants of Allah, by Muslims, insha'Allah, and wala mahala, insha'Allah. And alhamdulillah, this community is on the path of doing so. We spoke here a couple of weeks ago about Islamic education and institutions. And alhamdulillah, this society is doing so. The Community started to take applications and enrollment for second and third grade in the masjid here. So we ask you brothers and sisters, bring your children here, enroll them, let them join here. They will learn everything here that they will learn of goodness outside. The only thing that they will not learn here is the bad stuff that they don't need to learn. They will not learn that here. But other than that, Alhamdulillah, from here, there will be everything you want. Insha'Allah ta'ala. So we ask the brothers and sisters, come, the uh, admission is, is coming up, and the second and third grade uh, registration is starting. So whoever's child is within that range, please talk to Imam and the uh, community leaders. They will guide you to get our children together and receive the best education. That is all what we can do. 
That's what we can do and keep praying for, for them, inshallah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma fi lana dhulubuna wa israfana fi amrina wa thabbit aqdamana wa sunna al-luqa wa al-kafirin. Allahumma izan al-islam wa al-muslimin wa adilla al-kufra wa al-kafirin wa dam al-a'da al-deen. Wa ahmi hawzat al-islam wa rahmat al-ya rahmat al-rahim. Allahumma sur al-muslimin fi kulli makan. Allahumma surhum wa la tursu alihim wa kullahum wa la takum duddahum. بحولك يا بحولك وقوتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم حرم البيت المقدس اللهم حرم البيت المقدس اللهم انصر إخوان المسلمين في فلسطين اللهم انصرهم بنصرك اللهم أيدهم بتأييدك يا أرحم الراحمين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم رد المسلمين إلى دينهم ردا جميلا اللهم اهدنا واهد أبناءنا واهد بناتنا واهد نساءنا برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم اغفر لوالدينا ووالد والدينا ولجميع المسلمين الأحياء منهم والأموات اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على المبعوث رحمة للعالمين سيد المرسل سيد الأولين والآخرين إمامنا وإمام المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد بن عبد الله النبي القرشي الهاشمي وارض اللهم عن الخلفاء الراشدين أبي بكر وعمر وعثمان وعلي وعن بقية أصحاب نبيك وعنا معهم بمنك وكرم لا كرم لا كرمين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعيدكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله العظيم الجليل يذكركم واشكروا على نعمه يزدكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر أعم وأجل والله يعلم ما تصنعون قوموا إلى صلاتهم يا الحمد لله